Hello everybody, this is Dr. Novak again. This video is going to be about people that make comments and the difference between an undergravel filter and a plenum. And some people have made comments to the fact that um, all you talk about is undergravel filters. It's strange that they would bring up something like that. That that's all you're talking about is an undergravel filter. But undergravel filters are a little different than plenums. Now, in this hobby, a lot of things change. We We've learned that different bacteria do different things. We've learned that we used to think one kind of bacteria took care of everything uh, 40 years ago. And now we found out that it's different bacteria that do what we thought uh, other bacteria did years ago. And uh, these bacteria, let's say the uh, nitrosomatis bacteria or your Nitrosporia bacteria, nitrosomatis bacteria, for example, five genders, three of them are marine strains. And uh, Europi is the name of the bacteria. But a long time ago, we didn't know that. So we had to change the name of how the nitrogen cycle and the bacteria that we use. The nitrosporia bacteria that breaks down, let's say, nitrites into nitrates. We didn't know that, but we know that there's three genders of that, and all three have marine strains, and that's called uh, Winogradskii. And years ago, we didn't know there was a third kind of bacteria that breaks down nitrate into nitrogen gas. It was never talked about 40, 50, 60 years ago. Uh, yet, we did know the bacteria that was anaerobic, that did uh, assimilatory denitrification, because back in the 80s, uh, the, in the marine hobby, we used to have bags of fluid, of a sugar fluid that we would feed, something that would move water extremely slow, be void of oxygen, and feed it a glucose of some sort. We knew about that kind of denitrification, but did we understand the whole process of what it was doing, which it was creating ammonia. So a lot of people today, and I don't get a lot of comments like this really, about, oh, it's an undergravel filter. And Undergravel filters, I started doing some research and I looked up some old magazines, Tropical Fish Hobbies magazines, so, some of these old ones. Probably these magazines are older than a lot of you who have even been around. And I looked up products, filters, undergravel filters, and just the Name something to you. You know, has anyone ever heard of a dirt magnet filter? Have you ever heard of that? A dirt magnet filter. It was invented by Jungle back in 1967. The name of it is called a dirt magnet filter. Today, we call a dirt magnet filter, which is the name that was given to it by Jungle Labs. We call it a sponge filter. It's the same filter. It hasn't changed since 1967. The dirt magnet filter has not changed from what it was back in 1967 till the year 2022. But we don't call it a dirt magnet filter anymore. We call it a sponge filter. It uh, sounds like a cleaner name, doesn't it, than what the inventor actually named it. 
It's right here in the Tropical Fish Hobbies magazine. That's uh, that's the name of a sponge filter, a dirt magnet filter. Invented by Jungle. Another old time filtration that we changed the name. So we see that filters are made and the names are changed, just like under gravel filters are no longer under gravel filters because we don't use under gravel filters. Once again, let's go to some of our older Tropical Fish Hobbies magazine that was run by Dr. Axelrod, who is an ichthyologist. He ran Tropical Fish Hobbies magazine. And uh, there was the under gravel filter when it first came out. Was uh, There were two types. And this book was written in 77. And one was the tube filter, which basically you put, it was green in color, and it had uh, 90 degree elbows and T-joints. And you put the tubes together, and it had the 3 H tubes, and it had already holes drilled in it. You put it together to fit your aquarium, and little 1-8 tube would come up about 6, 7 inches, and you connect the airline to it, and that's it. And then you would pour your gravel in right on top of the tubes, and that was the under gravel filter. That's what it was called, an under gravel filter. But then, as technology moved on, that filter gave way to the under gravel filter plate. And that is the name of that. It's called an under gravel filter. And here I'm reading an ad right from uh, uh, Jungle, once again, the miracle under gravel filter. It's called an under gravel filter plate. Once again, Jungle Laboratories, it has an advertisement right here in an old Tropical Fish Hobbyist magazine. And they were actually filter plates. So the undergravel filter had progressed to being just tubes to actually being plates. Now the plates, like the plates we have today of undergravel filters, were basically about a half inch high and they had slits in them and a 3H tube. You put two plates down, connected up your tubing to it, put your gravel on. It was a lot easier than the tubing. You didn't have to connect anything together and worry about anything like that. And it kept the substrate off the bottom of the aquarium. The substrate laid on top of the under gravel filter plate. Well, this plate made a void. That void underneath the plate has no substrate. It's just water. That void is called a plenum. Now, it's the same Technology that is used, let's say, for your uh, heating and air conditioning. All heating and air conditioning, you have all your pipe work that comes into what is called a plenum. The air conditioner or heater unit will suck from the plenum into the unit. Then it will heat or cool the air, you know, going through the A-coil, and that will go back into your house. It goes into a plenum. Now, this is the way it's done. And it's easier to bring all your pipe work into a plenum, and then from the plenum, the furnace will suck its air from the plenum, then it will clean the air through filters and send it through the heating elements or the A-coil or whatever you have. And then, then from there, it will either go down or go up, depending on your furnace, the air and it will send it through the register through your house. That is called a plenum. So when you make a void underneath a filter plate, that is called a plenum. That's where we got the name using a plenum. Just like we don't call a dirt magnet a dirt magnet anymore. Nobody calls it a dirt magnet. Everybody calls it a sponge filter. 
But the real name of it by jungle was dirt magnet. So literally you are using, if you use a sponge filter, you are using a dirt magnet. And that's what it was named by the people who invented it. So we changed the names because of the way we are using the product. Or maybe the name wasn't to our liking. We didn't like to use dirt magnet. But that's exactly what a sponge filter is, a dirt magnet. It attracts dirt from the aquarium and collects it on the sponge. A plenum, on the other hand, when I use the term, because people say all you're talking about is an undergravel filter, the undergravel filter plate is a means by which to hold the gravel above the aquarium bottom. That's all it is. It still has a void of a half inch, which that would be your plenum. Now, plenums today are made either with the half inch or one inch, as I have shown you in my videos. And what they did not know, just like I was telling you about bacteria, we thought one kind of bacteria did something and now the names have changed today. We did not know back then that when they made the undergravel filter plates, they literally made a plenum and they did not know about electrical charges. And today, actually manufacturers, instead of saying undergravel filter or undergravel filter plates, they should be calling them plenums. They should, call them, they should be called like filter plenums now because we have learned more about technology and the way they work more than what we did 50 years ago, 60 years ago, and 70 years ago, 80 years ago. We know that we have electrical charges. We know that in that plenum or that void, are positive and negative ions, and they attach to each other. We know that is called an oxidizer. We know that these oxidizers are moved from that plenum into the water column, and they make more oxidizers. That's why when you see a tank running a plenum, you see that it has a higher redox than a tank that does not run with one. We found out that assimilatory denitrification was not the answer because all it made was ammonia. And we got rid of nitrates, but in the same process, we made more ammonia. The ammonia became a food source for bacteria, like cyanobacteria, and a food source for algaes. So, the plate a long time ago, which we did not know that plenum, what it was doing, and when we moved fluids through it slowly, we did not know what it was doing exactly. Didn't know. We were just trying to mimic sewage treatment facilities, and in the process of doing that, we made a plenum. So now that tubing like I said, the slow-moving plenum, that little tube or one, uh, one inch or three-eighths tubing that you're using is taking from the plenum and sending it back into the system. No different than your air conditioning system. So the void that's underneath your substrate now becomes the plenum. So if anyone's asking you on a forum or, or brings up anything, and that's why I'm doing this video, all you're using is an gravel filter. Well, we are actually using a plenum now, and we're calling it a plenum than just an under gravel filter plate because the plate itself is nothing but a means of taking the substrate and holding it off the bottom of the aquarium. In the meantime, because of the slits, the small little slits and stuff, we are able to move fluids slowly through that plenum 
back into the water column, which has negative and positive charge ions that are stuck together, which make oxidizers. We understand this now. So if someone says that's something but old technology, well, so is the dirt magnet, very old technology. Yet, why don't you call it by the name it really is, a dirt magnet? That is what it was called. It's right here in the Tropical Fish Hobbyist book. Jungle invented it. It's called a dirt magnet. Come on, let's call a spade a spade. It's a dirt magnet. It's not a sponge filter. It's a dirt magnet. It was made out of a sponge back in 1967. It's still made out of a sponge today. It used air back in 1967. It still uses air today. It is a dirt magnet, but we don't like calling it that. We call it a sponge filter. So when we have an under gravel filter, that would be with the tubings. If we have an under gravel filter plate, then that works different than an under gravel filter in days of yore, because now we are lifting the substrate off the bottom, and we found out, which we didn't know 60, 70 years ago, what it was doing, that it was actually, because of electrical charge, bringing ions together, positive and negative ions together, okay, and we did not know how that affected ORP, or made oxidizers, when you had a negative and positive ion, that's an oxidizer. We didn't know that. But today we know because scientists, microbiologists, and things, we've all studied this. And we all found out this is what's happening. This is how it works. This is how Mother Nature works. She's real, real funny. She came up with the idea billions of years ago, and we just found out about it only a few years ago, if you want to look at it that way. A blip in time. And we did come up with the plenum, which had no movement in it except through diffusion or through electrical charge. And then I said, wait a second, can't we take the plenum and move flu fluids through it very slowly, just like we did 70 60 and 70 years ago? Can't we go back to that? Why can't we? So that's it for this video. I want to thank you for watching. Uh, just yesterday, I thought I would mention that I had like uh, over 78 people sign up to the channel. Uh, I hope the video made very clear what the difference is between an under gravel filter and what a plenum is. So uh, if anyone ever asks you the question, you would be able to send them to this video and say, here, this explains to you the difference between an gravel filter and a plenum and how it's used. So until next time, happy fish keeping. This is Dr. Novak. And once again, thank you very much for watching.